W związku z tym przez 2-3 lata podróżowałam śladami Jakuba Franka po całej Europie. Wszędzie starałam się zwracać uwagę na te rzeczy, które szczególną rolę mają w powieści. Te, które pozwalają powieści w jakiś sposób uprawdopodobnić te wszystkie wydarzenia, które są opisywane, a więc smaki, zapachy, rodzaj światła, te detale, które są związane z podstawową jakością naszego życia. I myślę, że to była jedna z najbardziej barwnych i godnych zapamiętania przygód w moim życiu. The Books of Jacob is Olga's magnum opus. It is the 900 page saga of Jacob Frank and his followers. It's a kind of loving reconstruction of a, of a world. When Kosakowska fell asleep, Agnieszka and Uzbaka got to work on the bloodied clothing with its vast crimson patches, starting with her underwear, her petticoats and her skirt, finishing with her navy blue coat. How many such bloodstains does a woman see over the course of her lifetime, wonders Druzbaka. Kosakowska's beautiful dress is made of thick, cream-colored satin, covered here and there with little red flowers, bell flowers, and one little green leaf on the left side and another on the right. It's a light, cheerful pattern which suits Kosakowska's slightly darker skin and dark hair. Now bloodstains have flooded these joyful little flowers, their ominous irregular contours completely swallowing up any ordered pattern, as if malicious forces had escaped from somewhere, surfacing here. There is a particular kind of science that exists on these sorts of estates, the science of coaxing out bloodstains. For centuries it has been taught to future wives and mothers. If a university for women ever came about, it would be the most important subject. Childbirth, menstruation, war, fights, forays, pogroms, raids, all of it sheds blood, ever at the ready, just beneath the skin. What to do with that internal substance that has the gall to make its way out? What kind of lye to wash it out? What vinegar to rinse it with? Perhaps try dampening a rag with a couple of tears and then rubbing carefully, or soak in saliva. It befalls sheets and bedclothes, underwear, petticoats, shirts, aprons, bonnets and kerchiefs, lace cuffs and frills, corsets and sukmanas, carpets, floorboards, bandages and uniforms. When the doctor leaves, both women, Druzbaka and Agnieszka, sleep. They've fallen asleep on either side of the bed, one kneeling with her head resting on her own hand on the bed, leaving a mark on her cheek that will remain for the duration of the evening. The other in an armchair, with her head dropping onto her chest. Her breathing sets the delicate lace around her throat in motion, like anemones in a temperate sea. <laughs> 